I know you want to become a data scientist because first and foremost, it offers one of the highest salaries in the whole wide world. And aside from that, it offers a lot of perks, right? So because of these monetary compensations, you really would like to become a data scientist one day. Not just an ordinary data scientist, but someone who is really an expert in the subject matter. In comparison to other jobs out there, you can really, really see that being a data scientist really would give you a greener pasture. And I'm so sure everybody would love to have a greener pasture. But then, there is a great however when it comes to being a data scientist. And it has something to do with who you are from the very start of your career and who you are at the end of your career. There are actually a lot of people out there who get hired as a data scientist. And at first, they are really very happy because at last they've found the job that they've been dreaming for a very long time. But then the problem is that they end up so sad. It's because they find out that as time goes by, the works of a data scientist is getting more difficult for them. And here you are, in the middle of the road, you would like to quit. And you would like to tell yourself that this kind of job is not really for me. And I really would like to find another one that makes me happy. Of course, no one would want to be sad in anything that he does. We always want happiness. And we always would like to find happiness even in our job because what we want is satisfaction in everything that we do. And I want to tell you this, data science is for everyone. In fact, our works, our day-to-day -day activity is affected by data science, but not everyone is really for data science. In so many points of our lives, our friends have persuaded us to apply for a job as a data scientist or maybe one of our friends one day had influenced us to study data science or to pursue data science career. In the past few years, data science has been a hype and I believe that one of you who are listening to me right now is also persuaded by the word hype of data science. And because of this hype, a lot of people have been trying to be a data scientist. But the problem is that, are you really capable to become a data scientist? Is data science the right career path for you? So we are really going to understand if we have what it takes to be a data scientist. So before we continue, please hit that subscribe button to enjoy more our Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm, Deep Learning Mathematics, Natural Language Processing, and Data Science Tips. So we are going to test ourselves if we really have what it takes to be a data scientist because at the end of the day, it's always ourselves that matter. We don't want to be an unfulfilled professional. And so we have to ask ourselves four questions. These four questions would tell us if we're really capable to be a data scientist. Number one, how much do you really understand about data science? Data science is a very broad field. It's vast. And because it's a vast field, it requires your deep understanding of the different skills and knowledge needed for you to do the job. It also requires you to do some specific set of skills for you to be able to do the job very excellently. And maybe in your experience before, you've just heard that data science is just, is just something about making models. It's just something about making analysis. But then I want to tell you that data science has many roles. It's not only one, it's not only two, but it's actually, or there's actually a lot of roles. So because data science involves a lot of roles, you really have to understand the differences between and among them. Say for example, do you really understand the difference between a data scientist and a data engineer? What about if I would like to ask you, do you understand the differences between a business analyst and a data analyst? Can you share 
with me down there? If you do, please write your answers, your explanations in the comment down below. Now, let me share with you the different job roles in data science. So we have a data scientist, business analyst, data analyst, we have machine learning engineer, then of course we do have the database administrator, we have the data and analytics manager, the data engineer and data or data architect, and of course we do have statistician. So do you know all of them? Do you at least have some of these skill sets needed to be doing some of these roles? So we're going to have some of them so that you would be able to understand the different jobs or job descriptions in data science. Let's first have a data analyst. What is the responsibility of a data scientist? So being a data analyst, you have to do different tasks. For example, you're expected to do visualizations. So visualizations is actually very important if you would like to do data storytelling, if you would like to share or relate to your audience the meaning behind the different data, behind the different numbers. Also, you are tasked to do data cleaning. Data cleaning is actually a very important part of data science, data analysis, because during this process, you're going to understand the different set of data. So you have to identify which ones are missing, which ones are categorical and which ones are not. And also doing this part, they're going to do the process or processing of a lot of data, massive amounts of data in most cases, especially when we are dealing with big data. And of course, you're expected to do some queries on the databases. What about a data administrator? What does he do? Just from the word administrator, I think it's very explanatory that what the job of this role is. So just for our own consumption, being a data administrator, you are tasked to see to it that the databases are properly functioning. So you are also tasked to understand if there is proper backups and recoveries of your data. Now let's go to data, data engineers. What do they do? So if you want to become a data engineer, then you are expected to build and test scalable big data ecosystems. This is really very important for data scientists too. So data engineers and data scientists really have to work hand in hand so that data scientists can run algorithm on the system. And being a data engineer, you're expected to see to it and to check and manage from time to time that the system is stable and it is highly optimized. Because when it is not stable and it is not highly optimized, then data scientists would not be able to run their algorithms very properly. And then we have machine learning engineer. So just from the word machine learning, I think you are already very much familiar with what machine learning is because this word, this term has been a hype in the past few years. As a machine learning engineer, you're expected to do some A and B testing. And also you're expected to do building the data pipelines. With that, you're also expected to implement the different machine learning algorithm. Like for example, we have your classification, we have decision trees, and we have your clustering. So these are just some of the jobs that expected of you as a data engineer, aside from the fact that you are also expected to have a deeper knowledge and skills in some powerful technologies. Like for example, you have SQL. What about a data scientist? What does he do? So if you are a data scientist, you are expected to understand the different challenges in a business setting if you're working for a business organizations. If not, you're also expected to understand the different setting of an organization. Like for example, if you're working with health technologies like medicine, then you're expected to understand the surrounding circumstances that are expected of you to really understand. So with this, you're also expected to know data analysis and of course data processing, which is really very important before you apply the different algorithms. Being a data scientist, you are expected to perform 
the predictive analytics. And with this predictive analytics, what comes hand in hand is the different predictive algorithms. So being a data scientist, of course, you are also expected to really understand and know the different machine learning algorithms because these are really very important, especially when you are doing with predictions. You have to also understand the difference between structured and unstructured data, and you have to know how to deal with each one of them because structured data has its own algorithms. Unstructured data has its own algorithm that work for it. Then we have statistician. The question here is this, how much do you know about statistics? So remember this, that being a data scientist, you also have to have a deeper understanding of statistics because I want to tell you about this one. Statistics is one of the pillars of data science. So if you have just a superficial background of statistics, then I suggest that you are going to study more and deeper about it. How much do you know about the different statistical theories and statistical models? So there are actually a lot of roles for data science and we have just discussed some of them. I want you to research about each one of them because I'm so sure there are still a lot of things I have never mentioned that you can just search and study for yourself so that you would be able to understand what are these skills or set of skills that you're going to master. Let's go to our number two test. Ask yourself this question. How well do you understand mathematics and statistics? This is actually connected to the role of statistics or statistician. As a data scientist, you really have to understand the mathematics and the statistics side of data science. So why do we have to learn about these two things? First and foremost, data science and is founded on mathematics and statistics. If you don't have that drive, that interest in learning mathematics and statistics, then I feel that data science is not really for you because you really have to understand the different concepts, the different theories that fuel the different algorithms and models. Because mathematics and statistics are extensively used in data science, it is expected that you are going to work with massive, huge amount of numbers. And truly in your job, every day for eight hours or more, you're going to look and face different values in numbers. And why do we have to understand the different theories and numbers of mathematics and statistics? Because as what I've said, they fuel, they are the prime motivators of your day-to-day -day job as a data scientist. So we can never avoid numbers. In fact, we convert or transform categorical variables into quantitative variables because quantitative variables are easy to deal with. So how much do you know about linear algebra, dimensionality reduction, probability distributions? What about the principal component analysis? Do you understand the central limit theorem? What about the base theorem? If not, then you're going to review them. Or if you didn't have any background about them, then I suggest you're going to study if you really want to become a data scientist. This is what makes data science different from other jobs. This is what makes it more interesting and challenging. It is where your mathematical ability as a person and as a professional is really pushed to the limit. Now, let's go to our number three. How intense are you at analyzing things? Aside from the fact that data science is about solving problems, it is also about algorithms and models because we use algorithms and models as a way to solve problems. We have to understand what's going on with our data using the models and the different algorithms. So these models and algorithms would give us the result, which in turn can tell us what to do and how to decide based on certain outcomes or result. And one thing that you have to also understand about solving problems is that it is not just about our rational capacity, but it also involves our feelings, our emotions. It's because at the end of the day, although data science is 
numbers, algorithms, models, programmings. It is always the people who would be the end consumer of our end results. Just like, for example, we understand that the trend of the customer is going to this way. So numbers would tell us about the trend of the behavior. So with this trend, we can design what strategy we're going to use so that we would be able to influence our consumers to buy our products. And also, the numbers would tell us how we are going to package our products. It tells us the design. It tells us the color. It tells us the different ingredients that we're going to use to make up a product. So this is why it's really very important to really combine the power of our reason and the power of our emotion to deal with the different numbers. This is the reason why data science is not just about one person, but it's about a team. So in a team, for example, there are a lot of persons that should be involved so that you could come up with a different ideas so that you can arrive at a common solution. And this solution is not just any other solution, but this solution is a win-win solution. With this power to analyze things comes with the idea of how well can you work with a team? Because if you cannot work with a team, if you don't know how to discuss results in your team to arrive at a certain win-win solution, then it's going to be a problem in, in any company or in any organizations. Let's go to our test number four. Can you spend much time to develop your learning, to develop your skill set in data science? So here, what comes is your openness to learning. And why do we have to learn? Remember that data science is a very vast field. And because it's a vast field, it requires also vast set of skills. So for you to be able to excel in this field, you really have to have an expertise in a lot of skills. So this is why learning does not stop in data science. You have to learn, you have to read every day. And learning does not come overnight. It is a process. I know what your problem in this test. Your problem is that you're busy. It could be you have a family, you have children, you have a wife. And our circumstances in life would hurdle us to study more. And what if I want to tell you that you can manage your time. The demand of learning is not an eight hour per day, but the demand of learning is just an hour. It could be 30 minutes. It could be 10 minutes of your time every day. But remember, you only have to be consistent. Nothing beats consistency because as we go along with the process of our learning, even if it's just 10 minutes per day, when it accumulates, it's going to be a big amount of knowledge. With a lot of resources nowadays, it's not actually very difficult for you to find your resources. So there are a lot of free online courses, free online resources that you can read. There are a lot of literatures. There's a lot of data science researches that you can study. And maybe out of these studies, you would be able to get some of the findings or results of these researchers that are also very applicable to your business case or to your organization's case. Also, another option is that you can enroll in a paid online courses. There are actually a lot of data science learning providers that you can choose from, from the most basic, the most advanced, from the cheapest to the most expensive ones. It is up to you to choose. So these are the four tests that can make you a standout in data science. Now, try to ask yourself, are you ready to become a data scientist? Or do you have what it takes to be a data scientist? Do you want to know more about my channel? Just click the card on your right screen. So you can enjoy a lot of my free learning courses. So you can have deep learning, the mastering machine learning algorithm, the natural language processing. And of course, you can learn from my different data science tips. You can always learn and upskill for free here.